Take the fear and the hassle out of trimming your dog's nails by training him to file his own. You'll need a few supplies. First, you'll need a washcloth. You'll need a good supply of small, yummy treats. And you'll need a file board. You can make your own or you can buy one ready-made. This one from Scratchpad is a great size, it's sturdy, and the coarse sandpaper is firmly adhered to the board. It works out perfectly. Let's first get your dog really happy about putting his paws on the board. I'm using some of Jax's favorite treats here to lure him onto the board. I reward him as soon as one or more paws touch the board and then I toss another treat to reset him so he can get lots of practice at stepping on the board. And it helps him get the connection that it's stepping on the board that gets him the treat. And you can see here, I'm not really having to lure much anymore. He's just stepping up there. I treat him and then I toss for the reset. So now we're gonna get the washcloth out and use that to get him to use his paws. So I'm hiding that treat under the washcloth and I'm looking for the moment that he starts to use his paws to try to get to it. And I'm moving the cloth so that he can get that treat. If he just tries to bump it with his nose, I'm going to hold the cloth firm so that he can't get to it. I want him to see this game is all about the paws. And so as soon as he starts using those paws, that's where the treat becomes available to him. So as you can see, he's catching on here pretty quickly. The, using the paws is what's getting him the treat. I'm going to spend time at that stage until the dog is really engaged and excited about offering his paws, just like Jax is. And then we're going to go ahead and put the board at an angle. Having the board at an angle is most ideal for the nail trim. Now, as you can see, even my very enthusiastic little dog here got a little bit worried when I put the board at an angle. So I had to give him a little bit of extra verbal encouragement. If that hadn't been enough to get him going again, I would have lowered the angle of the board. But just a little bit of verbal encouragement got him going and he's back playing the game, working to get those treats by using his paws on the board. And if sometimes they manage to get a treat without the paws, it's okay. But you're going to want to try to prevent them from getting the treat under the washcloth until that moment they use their paws. Now here, he was enthusiastic enough. I decided to give it a try to see if he would give me that behavior without the washcloth. And so I'm going to reward him for getting those paws up there. Um, and not just trying to jump up, but actually some paw movement on the board is what I was rewarding there. Ah, there, we got another little movement. It was pretty slight. But that's what we start off with. So he can understand that it's not just putting his feet on the board anymore, but that it's actually scratching on it, whether the washcloth is there or not. So anything that looks like paw movement on the board at this point is being rewarded with a reset cookie. All right, I'm going to move to my second dog and show you just a little bit different style of both teaching him and the dog having a little different style of using the board as well. This is Zeke. Zeke's done a lot of trick training, so I'm gonna actually not lure him yes. on the board. I just put the board down and I, I knew he'd be pretty quick to put his feet on whatever I set down because we've played enough games like that. And so as he's putting his feet on, I'm marking it with a yes and tossing a treat for a reset. So we were able to get through that stage really quickly with him because of his experience. Now I'm placing the treat under the washcloth, just like we did for Jax, and looking for any of that paw movement and rewarding it with making sure he can get to that treat as soon as he starts using his paws. He's a little more persistent than Jax was on trying to use his nose. So I really want to make sure he sees that this game is all about the paws. So there I had to encourage him a little bit, showing him a little peek of the treat to get him engaged again. There we go. Before moving on to that stage of having an angle, I want him to be there. He, he managed to get the treat first. That's okay. Uh, I want him to be pretty happy about using his paws and really understanding that that's what the game is about. He's giving me some pretty good behaviors there, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up on an incline. Using that washcloth, you have to kind of um, hold the washcloth against the board to keep the treat from falling out there. And then that moment you see any paw action, you go ahead and pull it away and let the treat fall. Zeke's so having a little harder time finding the treat <laughs> once it falls than Jax did. So I'm helping him out there. Again, holding it they're keeping the treat underneath it until he uses his paws. So he's really getting the idea of what it's about. 
And when it feels like the right moment, you go ahead and you ask for it without the washcloth. So there I just tapped the board, and sure enough, it gave me a little bit of paw movement there. Yes. Ideally, I'd like that board to be even a little more upright than what it is now. So we're working toward that to really get that best angle on the nail trim to make sure that we're getting um, as much friction against the nail versus the paw pad. And it helps make that nail nice and rounded off too. And even though those, those aren't perfect scratches, at this stage, I really want to reward any paw movement on the board. And if he gets a really good scratch in, I'm giving him extra verbal encouragement and maybe even a little um, treat bonanza there with multiple treats after the scratch. So that's basically the technique. As you're finishing up a session with your dog, be sure to put the board away. I wouldn't want to just set the board down and walk away because the dog's likely to try to scratch it and not get rewarded. And at this point, I want to make sure that every attempt at scratching at the board does get rewarded. Good point. Let's wrap up. Here are the key points to remember. Start easy with rewarding your dog for just stepping on the flat nail board on the floor. Use the washcloth to teach your dog to paw at the board. Tilt the board as your dog gets more comfortable with this game. You want to end up with the board between 45 and 90 degrees. Really, the steeper the better. When he's excited about pawing the board to earn the treat, that's the time to try removing the washcloth. Be sure to continue to reward any paw movement on the board while your dog is still learning. You may be wondering about your dog's back nails. Fortunately, most dogs wear down their back nails much more during daily activity than they do their front nails. So the rear paws typically require less upkeep by us. The technique for training the dog to scratch with his rear paws is a little bit different than how we've done with the front paws. We'll show you how to do that in a separate video. Have fun teaching your dog to trim his own nails.